All right, time for some more editing. In this video, screen set editing number two, I'm modifying the XY probing area of the offsets screen. It will clean things up a bit and it will make some room for my future angle probing setup. Video on that is coming. Okay, in the description is a link to download the image and buttons used in today's edits. Now, I like to use hotkeys, but I've included buttons without the hotkey designations if that's your preference. Press the control key and select the buttons you want and the touch image. Copy them and head to your mill bitmaps folder. Paste them in the folder and we're good to go. Back in the Mach 3 folder, let's copy and paste the edit one that we created in the last video. Rename it if you wish. I'm going to rename it Edit 2. Back in Mach 3, let's load the Edit 2. <laughs> if you have my XY probing scripts or your own, the single axis scripts need to be transferred to the inner buttons. Operator, Edit Button Script, click anywhere in the code. Then Control A to select all and Control C to copy. Save changes. It's going to ask you that even if you changed nothing. Again, edit button script. The inner buttons don't flash, but they are buttons. <laughs> Again, click, select all, backspace or delete, then Control V to paste. and save it. A shortcut to activate the edit button script is Alt O, then E. And repeat the transfer process for the other three scripts. When those transfers are complete, save current layout. Back in the Mach 3 folder, double click to edit. Okay, head to page 7, the offset screen. A tip here if you accidentally do an oopsie <laughs> and delete or move something, just Control Z to undo. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this background image non-selectable so I can't move it. Plus, it makes the layer invisible to selection. A reminder from part one, if you don't see this selectable option, in settings, turn on option lock for selection. Okay, now just to verify that the scripts did transfer from earlier, Select one of the inner buttons and check the execute code in the button's properties. Yeah, we're good. Include data to screen set. Yes. Now we can get rid of these big auto buttons. Select one of them, then press control and select the rest. Then delete. Also, select a center message and delete it too. All right, let's go ahead and replace our touch image. Select it and double click its image path. Head to the bitmaps folder if you're not already there and start typing its name. Our new one is called touch image 2 CS. And there we go. The image is the same size, so no further adjustment is required. We are, however, going to make it non-selectable. And now to resize the transparent buttons. Select one of them and use your mouse and arrow keys to get it to the size you want. Once done, select the other transparent buttons ending on the one that you resized. 
making it primary. Then head up to the same size button and click. Now, just select them individually and arrow key them into position. Now for the digitized LED. Head to page 5, the diagnostics screen, and select the LED and its text if you want it. Then Control C. Keep your mouse there and page back to the offsets screen. Control V to paste and move it into position. Arrow keys to fine tune and align top. I could go up a bit, so I'm going to select both and arrow it up a little. That'll work. Time for the new internal center button. In the control area, from the drop down list, select image button. Add and place the button. Open the bitmaps folder. Then press I on your keyboard to bring the files starting with I into view. Then select your image. If need be, use your arrow keys to position it. Select the old button, double click execute code, and copy the script. Back to the new button and double click execute code. Select basic script and paste it in there. Checking hotkey availability, we see that Alt I is in use, but it's only active when we're on page six the settings page. So no conflict with what we're doing. Still, I'm going to deactivate that in a bit. And just to check, Alt-E is clear for the external center button. Okay, so back to design. Select the new button and let's set the hotkey. Now we can select the old button and delete. Now for the external center button. The drop down list still shows image button, so we just add. In mill bitmaps, type E and select our button. With the button still selected, control click the internal button, making it primary. Then click on Align Left. Now select the external button again and arrow key it into position. I'm happy with that. Now select the old external button and double click the Execute Code. And select All, Copy, and Exit. Select a new button again and double click to execute code. Set to basic script and paste the code. And exit. With the button still selected, let's set our Alt E hotkey. And with that, we can now delete the old button. Now I'm going to go to page 6 to disable that hotkey that I mentioned earlier. I'm making the background non-selectable. And selecting the Alt-I button. To disable the hotkey, double click it and at the bottom click Delete Hotkey. Let's update the button text. Okay, that's done. Here's a pet peeve I have that I'm going to fix while I'm on this page. The units button's hotkey 
is not alt u it's alt f6 might as well fix that text as well that's better okay back to page seven Now for the hotkeys for the individual axes. First, we're going to make the text. To do that, from the drop down list, select label and add it to the screen. Modify the text. And enter. You can resize the labels with the mouse. Or you can specify dimensions, which I already have. Double click and enter 67 for the width and 14 for the height. Then enter. Instead of making each one individually, I'm going to make copies and edit the copies. With the label selected, Control C to copy. Deselect by clicking on the background, then Control V to paste. Hover the mouse. When the move symbol appears, click and drag it up. With the new one still selected, edit the text. Then deselect and paste again. Do this until you have the four labels complete. Drag them into position and use the arrow keys for fine tuning it. It does look like it's blocking the graphic a little, but when the screen set is loaded into Mach 3, the label's background will be see through. I think that looks good right there. Now to set the hotkeys. Note that it does matter if numbers are from the top of your keyboard or from the keypad. So set the hotkeys with the keyboard keys that you will be using. Click the button, head over to the hotkey field, double click and set. And do the rest of them. If you're good and happy with everything, go ahead and save and exit. Back in Mach 3, let's reload Edit 2. Head to the offset screen and start testing things out. As you can see here, the graphics on the individual access buttons freak out when clicked. I've only seen this on Windows 10. To fix this, close Mach 3. Right click on the desktop and select Display Settings. Under Scale and Layout, change this magnification setting to 100%. Then reopen Mach 3 and give it a shot. That's better. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Link is in the description to download the images used in today's video. Thank you and have a good day.